Okay, so let's get into some melodic elements of the piece and, and where they come from. So just like uh, a lot of the harmonic elements we've been talking about, understanding uh, the chord scale is going to be crucial when getting into what is the melody, just as much as it was when we're talking about what is the harmony. And what is the main chord scale or scale that Beethoven is leaning on throughout the first eight bars of this piece? It's F harmonic minor. All right. So to know that scale inside and out and all of its all of its permutations, all the different modes that come from that scale is really crucial in analyzing this this melody and in arranging it uh, your own way or writing your own piece. So to do so, we recommend Tessitura. Uh, we're going to put a link to it up here. It is the most thorough dictionary of scales out there. I highly recommend checking it out. It'll give you all the gruppettos related to a certain scale, all the approach tones, all the neighboring tones, all the different ways of practicing these scales so you know them inside and out, and all the different ways of approaching different notes in this scale. It's a really useful tool. So having said that, we're going to delve into how the first eight bars of our piece revolve not only harmonically around this F harmonic minor scale, but also melodically. So as we see the chord progression in Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro up here, we have the chord names um, and their functions underneath, the minor one and the major five, six, five. But if I wanna see these chords um, origin scale or their chord scale, uh, the scale that these chords are born from, I can just click on the S right there. And now I get all sorts of information about the chords. Like F minor comes from F harmonic minor. And that C7 we got in measure, uh, was that measure three, comes from C mixolydian flat nine, flat 13, which is essentially the same note grouping, just starting and ending on C in this case. It's much like how you would get a C major scale and then it becoming an A minor scale by just taking the same seven notes and starting it on A instead of C. So for all intents and purposes, you can go through these first eight bars and just consider that note grouping as where everything comes from. Right? If you wanna delve into, oh, this is uh, C mixolydian flat nine, flat 13, or this is whatever Locrian, whatever altered notes, you can, but it's essentially the same note grouping. So it's essentially the same scale. It makes it a bit easier to think of it like that. So those chord scales give us a foundation of now what we can do uh, with the melody. So now let's get into like uh, chord tones versus non-chord tones. If you hear the first phrase of the piece or the first two bars, you hear. So where did that melody come from, right? If you take the three notes that were just played over and over again, C, F, and A flat, or F, A flat, and C, it's just an F minor chord. It's just the one chord of the key that Beethoven is establishing here. So anything that's not in that cluster, anything that's not in that grouping, we'll consider a non-chord tone, all right? So then there's a matter of like differentiating non-chord tones into two groupings. We have diatonic non-chord tones, which would be anything from the scale, anything from uh, F minors, chord scale that's not in the chord. All right. So this G, B flat, D flat, and E are non-chord tones, but they're diatonic, right? So they're notes we find in the scale, but not in the chord. Uh, these can be used as approaches to and from like important melody notes. So this is basically a conversation about targets and approaches. And we can boil down the approaches into one of two types. We have uh, approaches that are in the scale and then approaches that are not in the scale. And which one you use is basically just a measure of how much tension do you want before the release of said tension. So we're using the chord tones as targets and we're approaching those targets by way of tension. This is all a tension and release sort of effect of our elements. And how do we get that tension? We use non-chord tones, either ones that are in the scale or ones that are not in the scale. Ones that are in the scale have less tension, ones that are not in the scale have a little bit more tension. 
So what sort of non-core tones or approaches can we talk about? We can talk about for now within uh, the context of our first eight measures, our theme A, our neighboring tones, passing tones, and appoggiatories, because all three show up in theme A, and they all resolve, they all release to a chord tone. And that all these approaches that Beethoven uses to get to his targets, all these tensions he implements, they're all non-chord tones that are in the scale. He doesn't use any of those more tense uh, non-chord tones that are not in the scale, all right? So one of the first examples of this is right off in measure two in that gruppetto that we talked about a little bit earlier. So what you have is that broken chord, all right? And we also mentioned earlier how he gets from the A flat to the F by way of this group of notes. All right? And so in that group of notes, you have two different types of approaches. You have the neighboring tone, F E F, right? And then you have the G that leads into that. All right? And every single one of those notes, every single one of those, those tensions that you heard are in the chord scale. They're in F harmonic minor. So there's a really good example of what Beethoven does a lot in his music and in this piece. Using the chord tone as a target, all right, that release, and using non-chord tones, that tension, as a means of getting to them. So aside from those neighboring tones and those passing tones, we also have an example of one other tension release effect at the very end, the appoggiatura. So that's putting a, basically putting like a tension non-chord tone uh, on a strong beat, like one. And that's exactly what happens at the end of the phrase while we have that sus chord. That F is the appoggiatura. But Beethoven sets it up right before that by using more passing tones, all right? So the passing tone thing, again, being uh, linear movement, straight direction. So you're not gonna change directions. It's not gonna like jump down and then jump up. A passing tone is gonna go from one chord tone to another by way of a straight, either descending path or ascending path. And you hear that in the two chord here, right into the appoggiatura. So with this perspective of like passing tones in mind, you start to see another reason why scales are so common in not only this song and classical music, but in music in, in general. Uh, it's because it's basically you can see it as a function of target approach, target approach, target approach, approach, target the whole time, right? Because you have this chord built into the scale and every other note could, could be seen as an approach, as a means of introducing tension that then releases when you go to the chord tone. And this is what's something that Beethoven does all the time. So this is something that we want to kind of like really point out and make sure we're all on the same page with moving forward. Okay, so that wraps it up for our conversation on chord tones, not chord tones, tension, release, and approaches, and all that stuff we just talked about. Um, stick around for more content and musical analysis of our piece. Uh, if you feel like it, hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.